So in this case, I've set up my company and I've made sure I've got the contact details for the company configured correctly. And I want to add a company tax return. But before I do that, I need to import the data from Xero. So we'll just connect to Xero. I'll select the, I'll continue with the seven organizations that I have, and then I'll select the one that I want. So one of these is the one that I will use for testing. Noting the name will be different. So the client, so it's called the client PTY limited here, but here it's test two and zero. I'm just saying it's okay and I'll continue as is. I'm bringing in data for the 22 financial year. Should only take a few moments for the data to splash through. Noting now that I've got two years, I've got the comparative year, 21 and 22. It's useful to have the comparative year because there'll be things like, for instance, superannuation liabilities, which if they're unpaid at the end of a particular financial year, they're not deductible in that year. They're only deductible in the following year. You'll notice that in the reconciliation section. So now that you've got your data in, you want to just check your mappings. And you will note that we do have we do have a detailed video on how to get your mappings right. So I'm not going to spend too, too much time on this. I'll just make sure all of these are mapped to the lowest level. So you have to say what kind of depreciation that is. And you can see it's simply a case of scrolling through to find where you want this. Now in this case, the depreciation has been put into zero using tax method. And for the tax method, we would be using temporary full expensing, definitely, definitely the easiest method, to simply write off the, the depreciable equipment. So now that you've got your mapping right, and as I said, check our, check our videos out because we do have a detailed video on mapping. Then I can head over to the forms and I can add in that company tax return if it's not already there. Because if you've been using the system for a while, it will have pre-populated already. You'll notice the depreciation is activated. Now this is tax depreciation and you'll see, you'll see more about this when, when I go into the system. Noting here that I would have expected to see some interest. So I will say this, if you do have interest and this is where you will have wanted to check through here, you don't have any, yes, there is some interest there. Okay. So in the case of any interest, dividends, received, trust distributions or partnership share, it's just important to make sure that you get the classification right. And in this case, that is interest. And notice this system made an error, so I've had to, to co correct the mapping. Now I can go back to that tax form and you'll see that there's an interest activated. But in this case, the interest is only the zero interest, which is the accounting interest. I must, in this case, manually add the tax interest. And as I said, if you've got dividends earned, trust distributions earned, or partnership share, you have to do the same thing. You have to manually put in the tax values and you'll get a reconciling adjustment between the two. I've also got more videos on reconciliation section and the company tax return. So be sure to check that out. But essentially what we've got is we've got a full and complete tax return. If you clicked your validate button, you'll find that there are going to be some errors. In this case, I didn't have a tax file number. It's just a dummy entity, but certainly you would click your errors. You would go through and you would just re resolve those. So residency, there's not too many here. In most cases, in most cases, you'll be reporting base rate ent base rate entity, which that's that's in the case of trading uh, trading companies, and you get the lower twenty five percent tax rate, and probably you'll also report small business entity, which gives you a few extra um, benefits and making it easy for reporting. But certainly check out our help guides if you're in doubt with any of these. So this. Front cover is filled, 
and everything that came out of zero is put into the right sections. And if you did need to make a change to anything, like just say that this was a cost of good rather than all other expenses, you just come to, uh, you click on that link, you arrive here, control F, so you won't see my control F because it's the top of the screen. Um, let's just do that again, control F, and you can see that you would be looking for consumables and then consumables, other consumables. So maybe that is, maybe that is gonna be purchases. So you can either just type it in or you could have just opened up the leaf and put it through like that. So either way, once you've mapped, made your fixes to your mapping, head back to the tax form and you'll notice that that change has been, uh, has been updated into the tax form. So if I came down here and went to cost of sales, I've now got other consumables in there. As I mentioned, there is, a, there is another video available on reconciliations, but really the reconciliations is the, it's the difference between your accounting profit and your tax profit. And there will be things like, for instance, non-deductible expenses, superannuation, for instance, super payable, as I mentioned, 30 June, 2022, non-deductible, whereas that super payable for 30 June, 2021 has now become deductible. You've got the decline in value for depreciating assets, and that may well be different to the temporary full expensing. Noting that, noting that here, the depreciation has got a whole lot of different calculated values, um, and it's certainly taking out that it's taking out that accounting value and putting in the tax values. So bear that in mind and check out our help guides on depreciation to fully understand how depreciation works. So now over to the financial information. And again, because you've got a set of accounts and assuming your accounts are well configured and set up, everything will be automatically filled. If you, are, if you are reporting any dividends paid by your company, then we do have a dividends module and a franking account module. So be sure to check those out uh, as there is some training content for those as well. Anything else like losses, for instance, we do have another training module for losses. And if you have to activate any of those other sections, you can certainly do so here. So if you've got capital gains in your company, be sure to activate. And then you see that they've, you've now got a capital gain section and that there is again more training for that. So remember I, I mentioned previously, if you had dividends, partnership and trust, you would need those. So if you did have those, just activate them and you'll see them pop in over there. Finally, you've got your tax calculation and your tax calculation, will, the gross tax will calculate on whether this is a base rate entity, i.e. a trading entity, as opposed to some kind of investment company. And then finally, if you do have any installments, you can click here and Logit will grab those installments from the ATO. So at least they will be recognized as credits to offset against the tax payable.